Hey, everybody, I'm back. And finally, the episode everybody over on the podcast has been waiting for. The, uh, the podcast listeners has been, have been waiting for this episode literally for months. This is the easy all-grain recipe for beginners. So this is the next step in your evolution from beginner to pro or to whatever, however far you want to go. It's taken me a while to get all this together and to develop the, the parts of this process that I wanted to develop. And I think I've got it right. This is a recipe that we're going to be able to use multiple times over and over, make many batches with, do several runs with, and making modifications each time. And each time we do it, we're going to learn something new. And so we're going to take this step by step by step. This is the first step. This is just a very simple all grain recipe for the beginner to do. And so you've, uh, if you've already done the super simple beginner recipe, which is a corn sugar wash, which is, doesn't involve any starch conversion. We're just adding sugar to the recipe uh, for that recipe to make the alcohol. Now we're taking another step. We're not adding any sugar to this recipe. We're going to get all our sugar from starch conversion, okay? And uh, that's a big step. And it's easy to kind of mess up, and it's easy to get wrong. And so I wanted to simplify it as best I could for the beginner. Now, if you are a beginner and you have not done a sugar wash or a corn sugar wash yet, you need to go do that first. That is where you want to start. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. I'll put a card up here somewhere for you to check out the super simple beginner recipe video. And um, then go, go do that first. This will uh, get you too far ahead all at once. And I, just trust me, I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking the beginner through this journey little bits at a time. So... Now, enough with all that. Let me get right into it. This recipe includes two and a half pounds of two-row malted barley, crushed. Now, when you're looking for these uh, ingredients online or at your uh, brew shop, make sure you're getting the crushed barley if you don't have a grain mill. Now, if you've got a grain mill at home, you can buy malted barley whole and crush it yourself at home. Seven and a half pounds of flaked corn. So, flaked corn is corn that has already been put through the gelatinization process. So, and that's the reason I chose the flaked corn because that saves us a target temp. The highest target temperature is to uh, gelatin, gelatinize, easy for me to say, gelatinize your corn. And uh, we're going to skip that process because we're using the flaked corn, sometimes called flaked maize, same thing. Um, so seven and a half pounds of that, two and a half pounds of the barley. That gives us a degree linter on this recipe of like 35. Now, I'm not going to get into the diastatic power and the degree linter, but if you'd like me to make a video about that, just put uh, hashtag diastatic power or hashtag DP down in the comments, and I'll know you want me to make a video just about the diastatic power and the degree linter of this recipe, and I'll do it. And, uh, so let's keep moving. Six gallons in my 11-gallon turkey fryer. I'm going to heat it up to 165 degrees, and that's when we're going to add the flaked maize, and we're going to rehydrate that flaked maize. We don't have to, uh, like I said, we don't have to gelatinize it. That's already been done for us. We're just going to hydrate it. We're going to get to 165. That's going to hydrate it. And as soon as we drop it in, the temperature is going to drop a little bit, and we're going to let that temperature fall to 153. Um, and that's when we're going to put the two row barley in and we're going to hold at that temperature for 90 minutes. OK, and then um, once all that is done, we're going to do a, a starch test. We're going to use some iodine and check our conversion, make sure everything went smoothly. And we're going to need two 
Uh, two fermenting buckets, two five gallon fermenting buckets is what I'm using. Uh, I did a video, it's about a minute long, uh, how to make a five gallon fermenter for under six bucks. So I'll put a card up for that or down in the description, you can check that video out. We're also going to use our triple scale hydrometer because we're going to be checking the original gravity, the specific gravity at the beginning before we pitch yeast. The reason we're going to do that is so that we can have an idea as this process goes along. Hey, when is my fermenting done? How much? Uh, what's my ABV? All these kinds of questions that we get asked all the time without the triple scale hydrometer, all you can do is ever guess. So get one of these. Hopefully you've got one. If you've been paying attention, if you've been listening to the podcast episodes or watching the videos, then uh, you know you need one of these. You probably already got it. I'm also going to be using a brew bag. And that is so that we can keep the water and the grain separate. So it's easier when it's all said and done, when we're done uh, cooking our mash to separate out those grains so that all we have is the wash uh, fermenting, that we're not trying to ferment on the grains with this one. And that's going to be all we need. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to get everything up to temperature and then I'm going to bring you back. And so we'll see you in a minute. Okay, we are at 165. I'll pull my thermometer out. I'm going to drop in our brew bag. Got two of these brew, brew bags. Got a smoking deal. If you're a, if you're part of the newsletter, uh, if you're a subscriber to the Mash, which is still in the Clears newsletter, um, I put this out when it was on sale. Uh, you could have got a smoking deal also. What I like about it is it's got this little drawstring that will hold tight against the handles on uh, on my turkey fryer. Go ahead and turn this down now that we're at temperature. And we're going to start adding in our flaked corn. I'm going to add about half of the bag. I'm going to stir up that. Stir that up real good. You don't want these cornflakes to uh, uh, to clump together. So you put a little bit in at a time. Get it nice and stirred up so there aren't any clumps. Put in the other half of the bag. Stir it up. And then as these, uh, as these cornflakes hydrolyze, you'll see them kind of swell up. See how that's all doughed together? You don't want that. So you want to make sure that all gets stirred up real good. Kind of, there we go. Okay. Get this all stirred up. Loosen up these clumps. Now we're going to add the second bag. About half the bag again. Okay. Now this recipe, this is not going to give us a high ABV. Everybody thinks they want to jump in there and uh, get as high of ABV as they can get. And maybe that is what you eventually want to do. But as a beginner, there's just more important things to learn as you're going through this process. And so this is why I start with the recipes that I start with. There are many, uh, many conversations about ABV. And I, I'm of the opinion that the lower ABVs have a better taste. Um, you know, but that's preference. But my goal here on this channel is to help the beginner get through these processes and learn 
the basics of what they need in an order that makes sense. And what makes sense is to start with lower ABVs, work your way up the scale because to get the higher ABVs, there are extra steps in the learning curve, other skills to learn to get you there. And you can get there, and we will get there. Um, but this is where you start. And when you're done with this, this is going to taste wonderful. You're going to love it. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this is starting to thicken up, which is what you want. The temperature will be dropping because we are adding this grain. We've got all the corn flakes added in. And I can just let that sit for a second. I'm going to get this um, barley ready. So that when we get our when our temperature gets down to 153, we're going to drop that barley in. It's going to thin everything out. And we are almost there already. So starting at 65, dropping in that flaked corn, having the time to stir it up, drops that process, drops the temperature down. Like right now, I'm at about uh, one, looks like one, 155 looks like. So you can see that this has, these flaked corns have hydrolyzed and it is thickened up. All right, our temperature is ready. We're going to dump in the uh, malted barley. And you will see as we do this how uh, that malted barley, those enzymes will begin to work on those large starch chains, turning them into sugars. And the, the, reason, uh, the reason we're using the temperature of 153 is because it's in the middle range. You have an enzyme that works at the higher end of the temperature, like 167, and you have um, another enzyme, the alpha and the beta. The beta enzyme starts working at the lower temperature range, about 153, and so um, the alpha the alpha amylase uh, breaks down big chunks of the starches, and then the beta breaks down smaller chunks to make really good fermentable sugars for us. And now that we've got this all stirred in real good, we're going to start our timer, and we're going to go 90 minutes. And we're going to maintain our temperature at 153 for 90 minutes. Then we're going to do a starch test with the iodine. And this smells so good. Man, this smells good. It reminds me of like a, like a Malta meal smell. Put my thermometer back in there so I can keep an eye on this temperature and turn the heat up if I need to. Okay, I can't look at the time while I'm recording, so I'm going to have to pause the recording and then I'll come back. Okay, so 90 minutes is up and I think we've got some good conversion. Um, I had to, you know, turn on the fire a couple of times to... Maintain my 153 degrees. Um, I can taste the sweet. We'll do a little test. See what we get.
Try and get that to stir around. Hopefully it doesn't turn black. It turns real light. So we're in good shape. We got good conversion. Now I'm going to reset my camera so I can show you how I'm going to get all of this out of the uh, turkey fryer and into my fermenting buckets. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to pull all this up and slowly let the water drain. Oh, I spilled some. Let it drain, let it drain, let it drain. And then kind of push it against one side. Kind of push it against the other side a little bit without spilling the water over the sides. And start turning the bag and tightening it up. And I'm going to get it to a one point where I think I can get it into this bucket, which I'm there. And I'm just going to transfer the bag to this bucket. And I'm not going to set this bucket all the way down and let it hit the bottom. Or I'm not going to set the bag all the way down in the bucket. I'm going to try to drape this over the edge. So I've got to kind of roll down so that I can open this up over the edge of the bucket. put the weight of the bucket on the cloth and then it'll hold it in place and suspend okay it's kind of a mess to do it that way but it's the cheapest equipment you can have to get the job done these bags are really cheap uh, you can get them online. They come straight to your door. I will put some uh, links down in the show notes show notes for all the equipment that I've been using. I'm also going to say that um, this has probably taken me three hours, three and a half hours, but I was filming. And so there's a lot of stopping and starting and things like that. So you know, you can you can get this done start to finish. Really, uh, if everything goes smoothly in two hours, um, that's not, you know, that's not that hard to do. Two and a half hours. This probably took me three and a half, four. Had a couple of interruptions. So once we get all the wash separated from the grains, we want to take a specific gravity reading. We want to get everything separated into both the buckets or whatever fermenter you're going to use. If you have a large fermenter, it'll go in there. Um, I've either I've got either a 50-gallon fermenter or 5-gallon fermenters. And so I don't want to put it in my 50-gallon one. So I'm going to use two 5-gallon fermenting buckets. And uh, I'm going to redo the camera, and then we'll take a specific gravity reading. We're aiming for this recipe, if all went well, we should be around uh, 1050, maybe a little higher if we got real lucky. Um, but that's what we're aiming for with this recipe, uh, 1050 or 1.050. So 
we'll get set up and see how close we got to that. Oh, there we go. So we're at uh, each one of those little marks is two. So we're at one zero five two and eh, one zero five one. No, one zero five two. So that turned out really well. We got all of our conversion. Um, so that went perfectly. Now we're going to get these set up in the fermenters. Okay, so you can see that can get a little messy. Now I've just got to even the buckets out. All right, so, so we've got everything evened out in our buckets. I'm going to carry these over to the cabin because I can't ferment in the, um, in the owl's nest in here because it's not insulated and it's uh, down in the teens tonight. So uh, I've got to keep this in the house. I have permission wind song she says I can so uh, that's wonderful I'm gonna go get these in the house and let them get down to temperature and then I'll do another cut of adding the yeast in and I'll do another cut after that once the um, bubbling starts once the bubbling action in the airlocks start I also want to say at this point had this not worked had you done this recipe and then you check your specific gravity and it's not at 1.050, maybe you're down at 1.02 or something uh, like that. Don't throw the batch out. You messed something up. It's okay. Add sugar. Just add some sugar in there and keep it going. Add enough sugar to get it up to whatever you want it. Point, uh, you know, 1.050 or even higher if you want. But don't waste all the work that was done because there's flavor there. And maybe you didn't convert the starches into sugars correctly. Maybe something went wrong and we can figure that out later. But just add some sugar or as my buddy Wayne says, add some cane flour to it and... Um, and get the fermentation going so that you can get a run in your steel. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anybody give you a bunch of shit about that. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I've got the mash moved over to the cabin. It has cooled down to 90 degrees or actually about 88. And uh, I'm just going to sprinkle some... Distillers activated dry yeast. And that also the yeast also comes with the easy all grain beginner recipe kit. And we'll just stir these stir this in. Kind of give it a vigorous stir. Because you want to have you want to make sure the wash has plenty of oxygen in the beginning of the fermentation process. And then we seal them up with the lids and the airlock. I gotta put some water in the airlock. And that's it. And we'll see y'all later.